Hello, Revive Youth Ministry. Today we are in week three of our teaching series called God-Sized Confidence. God calls us to a life of confidence in Him. We are not called to self-confidence. We are called to God-confidence, believing by faith that God is who He says He is and will do what He has promised to do. Today we'll be talking about having a plan to help us walk in the confidence of God every day. As we start, let us take a moment and pray together, asking God to challenge us and grow us through this series while thanking Him in advance for what He will do. Dearly Father, we thank You for all that You have done for us and the protection that You have laid on us. This is a crazy time, but uh, You have provided and given us so much. We ask that You help us to be able to create a plan and uh, continue to be with us as we move forward and uh, continue to help us grow and to build us up, not just only through this series, but many series that come that our relationship with you continues to grow deeper. You're a wonderful, amazing God. Thank you and amen. So everything now will prepare you for the next step. Don't run from adversity. Lean into it with all your heart and God will make you a leader worth following. That's a statement from Andy Stanley, the lead pastor at North Point Church. So why do you think a majority of people never see their New Year's resolutions actually happen? How important is it to have a plan behind each resolution? Well, living with confidence requires us to have an intentional plan leaning into confidence builders and away from confidence dealers. I remember when I first started uh, with the youth ministry at Covenant Fellowship, and um, for a long time we were going and we were doing activities and doing different things. And obviously for those that were there, uh, many of you guys have seen it, there wasn't much of a plan at times. And with not having a full, like, detailed plan, it caused some craziness. And even when I did make a plan, there are certain things that I didn't think about just because I was new to uh, the whole leading as a whole. Now, I feel like I have a better grasp on planning and doing things now, but at the time, there was so many questions that were asked of me that I did not have an answer for. One of the things was, uh, I remember when we went to uh, Dave and Buster's as a group, and um, some of you may have went, some of you may, may not have, um, especially those that are new to the group this upcoming year. But with it, uh, we went to Dave and Buster's, and uh, one of the things that we always did was we took some time to eat. And uh, we thought it out, and we were like, well, maybe we'll go to the food court, maybe we'll do this. Um, we also had to get our lesson in and everything else. And so uh, we get loaded up. We head over to Dave & Buster's. We get there, and we decided that we would try to run down to the food court before we would uh, go into Dave & Buster's. But the thing is, is the food court at Opry Mills Mall was actually a lot farther than we had originally planned or that I thought it was going to be. And so we all walked down there. We're getting there. Each of the leaders are down there. We order our food. We're eating. We're hanging out. We're having fun. We finally finish, and we walk back to Dave & Buster's, and now half of our time has already gone because it took too, so much time walking down there, getting food, and coming back that it just made it a mess. And so what happened is that once we got in there, some youth or some of you guys were like, well, I'm not going to really do much here now because we don't have much time. And others really went all in. But then we had to cut the time short because we had to get back on time, which caused way more issues and way more stress. And looking back on it and kind of seeing all that happen, I realized that uh, we could have handled it or I could have planned it out a little bit better uh, thought it through, walked through the process a little bit more. Uh, but that event and some other events that kind of went haywire, it actually resulted in me having a better grasp on things. Uh, sometimes it's all about uh, trial and error. 
not that you want to really do a lot of trial and error, but sometimes things don't go the way that you plan, and it just makes you look kind of silly or unprepared. And so this is why it's important to have a plan. So I want you to open your Bible to Nehemiah 6.3. And as we jump into today's teaching, let's look at the context for our main text. This may be a newer book of study for you, but it speaks powerfully of God's call to an intentional daily living. Nehemiah was the cupbearer of King Artaxerxes of Persia. He guarded against poison reaching the king by eating and drinking before the king did. This was a position with a small title but huge influence as the cupbearer was often the closest person to the king every day. Even though he, we are Focusing on a passage in chapter 6 of Nehemiah, I would encourage you to read chapters of this awesome story next week. But Nehemiah received word that the city of Jerusalem was in ruins. The walls surrounding the city were broken, representing the spiritual condition of the nation of Israel. His heart was broken for his people and his, the city, so he went to God in prayer, confessing the sins of his people and any sin that he might have been hanging on to in his own heart. Then he asked for God's favor upon his life and influence, knowing that he was just a cupbearer with a growing passion to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. What breaks our hearts the most might be what God is calling us into to create changes. Creating great change isn't about titles. It's about relying on God's power and provision, stepping forward in courage or with courage when the door of the opportunity opens. The king noticed the brokenness of, on Nehemiah's face and asked what was wrong. Nehemiah laid out the current situation with Jerusalem before the king. The king then asked Nehemiah, what he wanted, God's favor in action. Nehemiah prayed to God and then asked the king for his blessing to return to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall. An important lesson here is that many of us would do well to pray before we speak. How many of us have opened our mouths without asking for God's blessing and guidance first? Nehemiah went to Jerusalem with the king's blessing and assessed the condition of the wall. He then assembled a team, organized everyone with tasks and responsibilities, and the rebuilding process began. The first thing to be rebuilt was the sheep gate, where lambs would be brought in for sacrifice, representing Jesus, who would come as the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. The rebuilding process started with Jesus. The wall was rebuilt in record time, which made the surrounding enemies of the Israelites really nervous. They tried to pull Nehemiah off the rebuilding project by an invitation to come and dine with them, a.k.a. we are going to try to kill you. Here's what the response of Nehemiah was. So Nehemiah 6.3 And I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work and I cannot come. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? This response is so significant as we talk about having a plan to live in the confidence of God every day. Nehemiah knew, he knew that saying yes to dining with his enemies meant saying no to his calling from God to rebuild the wall. His enemies kept coming back with the same request and Nehemiah gave the same response. When we say yes to certain distractions, we are inevitably saying no to the things that really matter to God for our lives. Nehemiah had to learn to say no to distractions and yes to God's direction for his life. Nehemiah stayed focused, worked hard, filtered out the junk, and the wall on Jerusalem was rebuilt in an unbelievable 52 days. God wants to walk in his confidence every day, which requires a plan to say yes to confidence builders and no to confidence stealers. Walking in God's confidence means being very intentional about where we put our focus, time, and energy. 
Nehemiah knew that distractions and attacks would come, and he was ready with a plan. Every day we need to recognize the things that undermine our confidence in God. Say no to them in advance. And steer clear, choosing to lean into the things that grow us into who God is calling us to be. Remember that not all seemingly good invitations are from God. Let us take a look at some specific confidence stealers and builders, reflecting on what we should intentionally be saying yes and no to every day. So confidence stealers, a loss of our identity in God. If we allow our identity to be placed in anyone or anything other than God, we are setting ourselves up for disappointment. Say no to unstable identity anchors. So if you turn to Psalms 139, 13 through 18, it says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full and well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my Unformed body, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. So the next thing, falling into the comparison trap. We constantly compare ourselves to others. We have Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, now TikTok. We always lose as we either walk away feeling arrogant or insecure. God calls all of us to be the best version of ourselves for His glory. Say no to constantly comparing yourself to others. 2 Corinthians 10.12 we do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. The next stealer, having a been there, done that attitude. If we allow ourselves to become complacent or think that we have everything together, we stop growing and stop relying on our identity in God to help us through life. Always be leaning into an attitude of learning. Say no to the complacency and arrogance. This stealer is one of the big ones that I think of just because it is something that we tend to jump into because we feel like we've experienced things so much. If you think about like a, a three-year-old or four-year-old, they always want to do things on their own because they feel like they're old enough and at this point in time they're like well I've done it in the past and so they get so confident they get so far into it that all of a sudden they get into a situation where uh, they're trapped or stuck one of my foster kids I can't um, give his name but uh, one of my foster kids he was trying to put on a shirt and we were like do you need help do you want let us help. And he's like, no, no, no. And so he's trying to get it on. And somehow the shirt got twisted. And he has it partially on his arm, partially on the other arm. And it's like going like this. And it was all because his, like, I've been there, done that attitude. Told him that, like, no, I can do this. Say no to complacency and arrogance. So First Peter 5.5, 5, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble so here are the confidence builders remember that it's not about winning but serving Philippians 2 3 and 4 then make then make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love being one in spirit and one mind do nothing out of the selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. 
to serve with the gifts, abilities, and talents God has given you. We are most like Jesus when we meet the needs of others with love. Build your confidence by getting your attention off of yourself and onto other people through service. We are usually the most fulfilled when we are saying or when we are helping others say yes to serving. The next one, show an interest in others. Mark 10.45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus' life showed genuine love and focus on the lives of others. When we are having a comparison with someone, focus on being more interested than interesting. Listen to others with the intent to really understand, not simply to reply. Say yes to other people's stories. Be patient. You are a work in progress. Patience is one of the biggest things, especially with technology at our hands all the time. Patience is a virtue. It's something that we need to make sure that we are working on and maintaining. Philippians 1.6 says, Be, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Remember every day that you are not the final product yet. Commit to the process of letting God mold, shape, and grow you every day. The growing process is just that, a process. Over time, you will look back and be able to see significant positive changes that have happened in your life over time. Say yes to the process. I remember when I learned to, um, or I was working on playing piano, and uh, you sit down and you want, you think that you're going to instantly just be playing Mozart, but you sit down and they're like, okay, press this one, and press this one, and press this one. And you're learning like A, B, and C and the notes and those type of things, but it's taking so long and you finally get maybe a little tune. Mary had a little lamb, but you're like, no, I'm ready for this. And I remember when I was uh, trying to learn this in second and third grade, uh, I ended up giving it up just because I felt like I'm not getting this anytime soon. If I would have stuck with it, I probably would be playing uh, fairly well. But I didn't trust into the process. So say yes to the process. Courageously step out into faith time and time again. So Joshua 1.9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Don't let your past stand in the way of open doors for the future. Know that God is with you for you and he will be faithful to his promises over your life. When doors of opportunity swing open for you to use the gifts and abilities God has given you, step through the doorway with courage and knowing that he is with you. Say yes to open doors of opportunity. Just like with Nehemiah, God had called you to a great and mighty work. You are wired to make an impact with the gifts and abilities and passions he has given you. Walk with a plan every day, leaning into confidence builders and away from confidence dealers. Honestly assess certain relationships, habits, and social media interactions that affect your confidence. Own the impact these things have on your life. Remembering Nehemiah's words, I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? All of us in the room want to be more confident people in our relationships, careers, and communities. Just like the New Year's resolution, most people never see resolutions come to fruition because there is no plan backing up the hope for change. If you want to be more confident, decide today that you will live each day with a plan, intentionally leaning into confidence builders and away from confidence stealers. Most of us know the stealers, those habits that leave us feeling undervalued and insecure. Don't go there. Create a plan and live that out every day. Nehemiah knew God for himself and lived and led with intentionality. The result was confident 
leadership with great accomplishment for God's glory. God desires for you to live with God-sized confidence for his glory. I'm going to say that again. God desires for you to live with God-sized confidence for his glory. So here are your daily actions that I challenge you to do throughout this week. They'll get probably get brought up again uh, during our Wednesday night meeting uh, through Zoom. But these are the action plans. First, surrender. As you start each day, give your life back to God in prayer. Remember that life is a gift, and the gift comes from God. Do this at the start of every day. Ask for favor. Ask God for the, his leading and blessing over your life every day. God is good and has incredible plan for your life every day. Request his favor to the upon or request his favor to be upon your life, giving him credit for every success. Assess honestly. Look how different things affect your confidence as you go throughout each day. Make notes of those. Things which undermine your confidence and which things build your confidence. And then walk intentionally. Choose to lean into confidence builders and away from confidence stealers. Include a trusted friend in this journey to bring you support and accountability as you are choosing to walk intentionally in God's confidence. Dearly Father, we... Uh, learn so much during this series. You continue to give us the confidence that we need, the God-sized confidence, the confidence that we have knowing that you are going to be with us always, and you allow us to be able to say no to the things that are going to take us away from you and encourage us to say yes to the things that are going to bring us closer to you. We ask that you continue to be with the world as a whole right now because there is so much chaos going on with the pandemic and the tornadoes and the locusts and uh, the deaths that are taking place and brutality. There's just so much going on and I just ask that during this time that you continue to work on each of our hearts and allow us to be able to have peace. To prepare us for the time that we will have with you in eternity after death. I pray that you be with each of the families that have recently lost a loved one and continue to show them the light that you have for them. It's never too late for us to turn around and just come to you, Lord. And we thank you for all that you have done, the protection that you have already given us thus far. You're a wonderful and amazing God, and I ask that you continue to take your wisdom and pass it on to us as we go through these next couple of weeks. In my name, amen. So if you made it this far, I didn't give a pre-warning, but if you made it this far, shoot me a text, and the first two people that shoot me a text will get free lunch. I'll talk to you later. Bye.